I will show you right now how you can check the switches in the cell phone motherboards. Set the multimeter to the buzzer option and there press the power button. The switch contains two pins, the ground and the high pin, the pin where we have voltage. This is the ground, so this is the high pin as you can see. If I press the switch, as you can see, I hear a buzzer, okay? Or I get a continuity, as you can see in the multimeter. So, when you press the switch, as you can see, we get a low resistance in the multimeter. Means the switch is worked correctly. How you can know if an IC in the cell phone motherboard is failed or not? How can we check the IC? By checking the heat of this IC using your finger. If the IC is very hot, means the IC is bad. Or you can check this capacitors, this ceramic capacitors around the IC. This ceramic capacitors should not be shorted in both sides. Okay? If we check this capacitor with the ground, this check here in this side it's okay it is connected to the ground but in the second side it should not be connected to the ground as you can see good so the ic is good Silphone camel fault. What is the silphone camel fault? Basically, the silphone camel fault is the connector, as you can see. This connector. This is the power connector. Okay? As you can see, we have here the power connector. Okay? Basically, this is the main failure in many silphone, as you can see also here. In this motherboard this is the power connector this is the power connector okay so always you should check if you get a motherboard with this problem usually you should replace this connector but sometimes the connector can be good you should just check the soldering here okay you should just check the soldering and check also this part, the ground or the negative part should be connected. Okay, this is the first failure that every te technician can get a lot with the cell phone motherboard. The second, of course, is the battery connector. The battery connector, these terminals or pins, as you can see, can be broken. Even if you have here, for example, you, you see that these pins are good, but it can be broken in this side. So always you should check these connectors and also check the soldering of this. The same also for the seam connector. These pins can be broken inside or can be deformed or distorted. Also you should check this soldering. The same also for this. Okay, the third problem that I, I get a lot is the switches. As you can see, these switches, 
are easy to be broken okay so this switches also can be broken also you should check the switches the soldering of the switches okay the soldering of the switches so the other problem is with the connectors as you can see like for example in this motherboard as you can see this naps or this connectors can be cut so you should always pay attention when you manipulate or when you deal with this connectors as you can see you should always pay attention when you deal with this connector okay always pay attention because among the common failure of the cell phone motherboard is this connector as you can see okay and of course also you should pay attention to this soldering for the battery soldering and the CMOS battery soldering also of course the other problem is the ICs the ICs can be shorted especially the power management IC or the power IC so that's why you should always check the ceramic capacitor around the IC if you get a shorted motherboard always you should check the chemical capacitors around the IC if you find any ceramic or the ceramic capacitors around the IC if you find any ceramic capacitor shorted to the ground in both sides means the IC is bad you can also check the IC using your finger if you find a hot IC means the IC is bad you should replace it okay now I will show you how to check the ICs how you can know if an IC in the cell phone motherboard is failed or not as you can see we don't have here any pins or connectors how can we check the IC by checking the heat of this IC using your finger if the IC is very hot means the IC is bad or you can check this capacitor this ceramic capacitor around the IC this ceramic capacitor should not be shorted in both sides okay so I will show you how so first you should put the multimeter to the buzzer option and then press the power button so as you can see to check this IC I can just check this capacitor as you can see here here this is you should check the capacitor as you can see here the capacitor should not be shorted to the ground in both sides so let's put the black probe on the ground here we have ground everywhere in the cell phone motherboard we have ground okay all this yellow part are ground also here the connectors cover are ground okay so I put the black probe in the ground and let's check for example this capacitor here in this side this capacitor is connected to the ground but in the other side it should not be connected to the ground as you can see so this capacitor is not connected is not shorted let's check this for example in this side good but this side should be connected to the ground this side should be connected to the ground as you can see but in this side no we can check for example this capacitor capacitor also as you can see in this side is connected to the ground but in this side no means this IC is good but if you have any PF capacitor around IC that is connected to the ground in the both sides means the IC is shorted is bad okay you can use this method in every IC in the cell phone motherboard let's check another cell phone motherboard as you can see here okay so for example for this motherboard as you can see here we have this IC we have many ICs as you can see here we have the processor the RAM and ICs so for example for this IC we can check if this IC is bad or not by checking 
the PF capacitor around it. As you can see, this is a good PF capacitor, means good IC. If we check this capacitor with the ground, let's check here in this side, it's okay, it is connected to the ground, but in the second side, it should not be connected to the ground, as you can see. Good, so the IC is good. We can do the same for this, for example. So let's check this PF capacitor. Here it is connected to the ground, but in this side not. This is a good IC. Also for the processor, for the RAM, etc. So this is two ways that you can use to confirm if your ICs in the cell phone motherboard are good or not. The ICs and component references. I'm going to show you what is the reference okay and what is the purpose of knowing the ICs and component references and also I will show you how you can replace a failed or a bad component what is the right component that you should choose okay so as you can see here for example for this processor this NVIDIA processor, as you can see here. So this is the reference for this IC, as you can see here. This is its reference, okay? As you can see. NPF748-S2P. This is its reference. Means, if you have, for example, a bad processor like this, you should replace it with another processor with the same reference okay. the same thing for example let's assume for example that you have problem with this circuit for example what should you do you should replace this circuit with another circuit with the same reference as you can see here here also as you can see do you see the reference of this IC here we have the reference so let's see again as we can see we have the references for this IC okay also for this two ICs so every component in the motherboard as you can see has a reference okay also for this as you can see this is inductor this is inductor as you can see Okay, this is inductor. We can check this component using the multimeter. We should get a low resistance and we should hear a buzzer. Why? Because this is this is inductor. Okay, this is inductor. So let's check this inductor using the multimeter. Okay, so I have here my multimeter. Always I should put the multimeter to the buzzer option as you can see. And then press the power button as you can see so let's check this inductor okay let's check this inductor so as you can see here here we have one terminal and here we have the second terminal so let's put this probe here in one terminal and put the other in the second terminal as you can see we get a low re resistance and we get a buzzer. Why? Because this is what? Because this is inductor. Inductor is exactly like a fuse. Okay? So if you have, for example, a failed inductor, you should replace it with the same inductor as this. Okay? And about the capacitors and diodes, for example, for this capacitors, for example, as you can see here, you cannot find here the reference above this capac capacitors. Also for this, for example. So what should you do in this state? You should replace the capacitor with the same shape, okay? And with the same size. If, for example, you have a bad capacitor like this, you should replace it with another capacitor with the same size, okay? Because we don't have here the reference. Or you can use 
your capacitor with the same reference but you should check the circuit diagram or the schematic of this motherboard by checking the schematic of the motherboard you will find exactly the capacity or the reference for this ceramic capacitor i will show you an example in the schematic as you can see here for example as you can see here we have here a ceramic capacitor exactly the same capacitor as this capacitor the same so in the schematic as you can see here in the schematic do you see we have the reference or the name of this capacitor this is a ceramic capacitor c114 c110 with its characteristics we have here 0 0.1 microfarad 16 volt so all this capacitor has the same value okay so if you have a bad capacitor for example a bad ceramic capacitor you can change it with the same size if you change it with the same size 100 percent it will have the same characteristics means in terms of microfarad and voltage or you can look for the schematic of the motherboard and then go and check the characteristics of the failed capacitor and then you can replace it with another capacitor with the same characteristic or even you can look for another motherboard for example let's assume for example that we have we find that this capacitor near to this coil or to this inductor is failed is bad means is shorted okay what should you do you can go and check the schematic and look for its characteristics and then bring another with the same characteristics or you can change it with another capacitor with the same size and also the same color it can work or you can look for another motherboard the same as this motherboard and use the capacitor in that motherboard instead of this failed capacitor okay so this is how we can replace this capacitor the same working principle for the coils also you can go to the schematic and check the characteristics of coil but for the ic's as you can see for the all ic's and mosfets as you can see here they have the characteristics above in their body okay so let's check this motherboard also as you can see do you see this is the processor do you see the reference a clear reference here we have bcm 2155 2k ffbg this is the reference okay also for this it has the reference also for this any all ic's has or have references so for the ic's and the chips no problem you can use the original reference and look for another ic with the same reference of course if you have the ic failed for example if you have a failed processor you should bring another processor with the same characteristics or you can use an uh, interchangeable or you can use interchangeable processor for example or ic but as i told to you for the ceramic capacitors for example you can use if you have a failed ceramic capacitor you can look for its characteristics in the schematic or even you can look for another motherboard with the same as the failed motherboard and then and then take that capacitor and install it in the place of the failed capacitor or you can use another capacitor in any motherboard you have but the condition is to be with the same size and same color okay as you can see because the capacitors has different colors for example for example for this 
the CEDO color of this capacitor, for example, is not the same color, for example, as this, for example. Okay? So, this is how you can find the reference of component in the motherboard. Okay? So, if we check this motherboard also, the same work in principle, all ICs and MOSFETs has the references. Also, also the connectors. The connectors also has references, as you can see. For this connector, as you can see, also has a reference. Okay? Now, I will show you how to track signals in the motherboard. So, as you can see here, for example, do you see this pad? This pad, if you focus here, for example, for this, here we have a path, as you can see. This path means this is connected to this PF capacitor, okay? And also to this, as you can see, to this diode here, okay? So this means the direction or the path signal or the bus, this is buses. Here also, as you can see, here we have buses, okay? We have here another bus. Here we have buses, as you can see. So this is how you can check and you can track the signals. For example, here in this IC, this IC is connected to all these components around it. For example, for this IC, do you see all these buses? Means this IC connected to all these components, as you can see. So it's easy because this IC, we have this buses here, means all these PF capacitors are connected directly to, uh, to this IC. So to check, for example, the serviceability of this IC, I can just check these capacitors around it. If I find a shorted capacitor, means the IC is bad. If I don't find any shorted capacitor here, means the IC is good. Okay, this is the easy way and the quick way to know whether an IC is bad or not is to check the capacitor around it. If you find any shorted capacitor, means the IC is bad. Okay, so all this are buses okay all this here are buses so as you can see here for this connector for example i know that these pins are connected to this PF capacitors why because we have these buses right here also as you can see here we have buses okay so if you understand how to use these buses and this line you can track you can troubleshoot and repair any cell phone motherboard without using the schematic okay just by following the buses for example for me i know that this is connected to this why because i have this bus here but without these buses you cannot know if this is connected to this so let's check using the multimeter so as you can see let's check the continuity so if i put one probe here and put the other probe here, as you can see, I get the continuity. Why? Because I have this bus here, draw it here, okay? So the same principle in, in the whole motherboard. You can use all these buses to check, okay? To see how to test the cell phone components. So let's check the continuity. So the continuity is seated correctly. Now we can check this motherboard. So the first thing is to check the soldering of all slots and components. So here we have the ground here, as you can see. So this is ground everywhere. We have ground, as you can see. Okay. All these are ground. Okay. So let's check the speed capacitor, for example. We should, for the PF capacitor, always one terminal of the PF capacitor is connected to the ground for every chemical or ceramic capacitor. So, for this, for example, capacitor, good. If you find that it is 
shorted this chicket as you see if you hear a buzzer or you get a low resistance when you check in GPF capacitor means GPF maybe a capacitor is bad or the IC near to it is bad for example I can just check the PF capacitors near to the IC if I get a low resistance like this or a buzzer means the IC is bad as you can see of course the ceramic capacitors can also be bad but you can remove it and test it outside of the motherboard but always 90% when you find a shorter PF or ceramic capacitor means the IC is bad okay so here as you can see this is not a PF capacitor as you can see in the multimeter here we have a low resistance this is inductor all those as you can see are inductor so as you can see this is inductor and this is PF capacitors okay here we have PF capacitors but for those those are inductor so if I check for example this PF capacitor as you can see no buzzer no buzzer no buzzer but for this inductors if you check it like this as you can see we have a buzzer the same for this also the same for this because the the inductor is is just a wire is exactly like a fuse so here of course we have another inductor so let's check it as you can see here okay so of course we have switches here always the switches you will find that one pin of the switch is connected to the ground let's put this black probe in the ground and check these two switches always one probe or one terminal should be connected to the ground as you can see okay but as you can see we have here chemical capacitor we can check this chemical capacitor as you see oh we have here a problem here we have some problem here over here so we, let's check it again now now is good maybe i touch something here maybe i touch this the ground because here we have the ground maybe i touch here of course this chemical capacitor connected to the ground in this terminal as you can see here we have the ground as you see it is connected to the ground but if I test it like this, it is a good, okay? For example, this IC. If I want to check whether the, this IC is good or not, I can't just touch the IC when I power the cell phone or the motherboard. I can't touch the IC. If the IC is hot, means it is bad. But I can just check the PF capacitor around it, okay? I can just check the PF capacitors around it if I find a shorted PF capacitor or ceramic capacitor. So I mean by PF capacitor, this capacitor, as you see, this is a picofarad capacitor. We call this PF capacitors or ceramic capacitors. Okay. So I can just check the capacitors around the IC so let's check for example this capacitor so now we have a resistance if you find a low resistance or a shorted uh, ceramic capacitor means the IC is bad you should replace the IC let's check this, this IC for example we have here a chemical capacitor as you see good always the chemical capacitor is connected to the ground in one side in one terminal as you see it is connected to the ground in this side as you can see in the multimeter as you see we have a low resistors a low resistance but this part should not be connected to the ground it is connected to the IC, to data lines of the IC. But if you find this chemical capacitor is shorted in the both sides, means you have problem in the ice. You should replace the ice. Okay? Why I focus on ceramic capacitors around ices? Because the majority of failure are short. 
failure is the ICs. Okay, so for this IC, for example, if we want to check it, we can just check this ceramic capacitor near to it, as you can see. Automatically, this is a good IC. It's not a shorted IC. Okay, now I will teach you some symbols. So, this symbol, as you can see here, is for a ceramic capacitor. Okay, this is ceramic capacitor or PEF capacitor. Okay, but for this symbol, as you can see, or even this symbol like this means a polarized capacitor or chemical capacitor okay this is a polarized capacitor or chemical capacitor okay when you find so this symbol is for diode okay d is for diode this is here we can, you can find c or even p c this you can find the diode okay so we have this kind of diode and we have another kind of diode this is its symbol. This is a zener diode. Okay. So for the resistance, you can find its symbol is this with R or PR. So this is a resistor. You can even find a symbol with this shape, as you can see. This is also a resistor. Okay. So for this symbol, as you can see, this is inductor L. Okay, so this is inductor. Okay, so for the IC, you can find a square like this or a rectangle like this. So this symbol is for ICs. Okay, so this symbol, as you can see, like this is for the crystal or the crystal oscillator. Okay, so this is crystal oscillator. Okay, you can find X or Y, it's symbol. Okay, etc. Okay, so this is the main important symbols that you should understand. And the main important tip here is that always the ceramic capacitor around the IC are connected to the ground in one side. So if you find that a PF capacitor is shorted to the ground in the both sides means what? The IC should be replaced is bad. Okay? To see how to diagnose a cell phone motherboard. Okay? So the first step is a visual inspection. So always before doing anything on the cell phone motherboard you should first check all parts and components of the motherboard for example you can begin with the power jack you should check the power jack okay check inside the power jack okay check all parts as you can see also here these pins check the soldering you can then go and check the battery connector okay check the sim card so you can go and check switches as you can see this is just a visual inspection and check all the ICs okay so you should check the body of the ICs because sometimes you can find a bad IC a burnt out IC okay then check this the CMD component like capacitors and inductors as you can see here you can also check the motherboard itself the motherboard can be broken so you should check the motherboard itself okay and then check all connectors as you can see like these connectors for example for this motherboard as you can see here also this is the power jack in the power jack always you should check inside the power jack and the solder as you can see here also this part as you can see here after that you should check whether you have 5 volt or not in the power jack so 
when you connect the USB connector, as you can see here in the power jack, you should go and look for the 5 volt in the next capacitor to the power jack. As you can see, here we have a ceramic capacitor. When you plug the USB connector, you can find here 5 volt. If you don't, if you didn't find 5 volt, means there is a problem in the power jack. Maybe these pins are not soldered correctly or this part inside the power jack is broken. Okay. So as you can see here, also for this motherboard here, we don't have PF capacitor. But if we see the other side, as you can see, we have here the SMD component. If you check this capacitor or this, you will find here 5 volt because this component are near to the power jack. So always after the visual inspection, you should check whether you have 5 volt or not. Okay, then you should check the ICs. You should check if the, the serviceability of ICs and chips of the motherboard. How can you check? this ICs and chips. Easy. You should just check the ceramic capacitor around the IC. If you find that the ceramic capacitor around the IC are not shorted to the ground means the IC is good. I will show you how using the multimeter. So we have here our multimeter. So Let's first select the buzzer or the continuity option and then press the power button as you can see. So now, for example, let's check the serviceability of this IC. Because you cannot check the pins of IC. We don't have here the, the pin of IC. This is an integrated circuit. But we have here the component same to component around IC, especially the ceramic capacitor or the PF capacitor. So if you find that this ceramic capacitor or this or anyone here is shorted, means the IC is bad. Because always any ceramic capacitor around the IC is connected to the ground in one terminal, just in one terminal, not in both. So let's check, for example, so here we have the ground, as you can see, I have the ground everywhere. So I will put the block probe here in the ground, okay? And then let's check, for example, this capacitor. I will find that any capacitor here is, going to, is connected to the ground in one side just. So let's check this, for example. So the capacitor is connected to the ground, as you can see, the multimeter, low resistance, okay? but should not be connected to the ground in this side, as you can see. Good. Means this capacity is good. Means the IC is not shorted to the ground. Because this terminal, this side is connected to the IC. And this is connected to the ground. When the IC is shorted, you will find also this side connected to the ground. Also, when you check the capacitor like this, you will find a continuity like this. Okay, so let's check this also. The same working principle. Let's check here. One side is connected to the ground. The other side. The other side now. Here, one side is connected to the ground. The other si side now. Here. So this side connected to the ground, this now here, this is connected to the ground, but for this now, okay? But if you find that a chemical capacitor, for example, is connected to the ground in both sides, means what? Means the IC is bad, okay? You can use this method in every IC circuit. For this, for example. Let's check this PF capacitor. So here we have the ground, as you can see. So let's check here the side that is connected to the ground. But this should not be connected to the ground, as you can see. Okay, this connected to the ground. This should need to be connected to the ground, as you can see. Okay, I will show you this 
techniques and these tips in the schematic. So let's go to the paper. I will show you all this in a schematic. Okay. Let's assume that this is IC. We have, for example, an IC. This is, for example, IC. Okay. This is IC. So here, for example, we have the VCC. Let's assume that here we have the VCC. For example, let's assume that the VCC equal to 5 volt. Here, for example, we have the ground. Okay. For example, here we have enable, enable signal, etc. So for every SE, you will find some capacitors that is connected to the ground exactly like this many capacitors that is connected to the ground you can find for example here another capacitor and that is connected to the ground this is ceramic capacitors okay this is ceramic capacitors so all these capacitors should be connected to the ground in one side in this side for example for this but in this side no so let's assume that this capacitor for example if you check the continuity of this capacitor you get a continuity or a buzzer means what means also this side is connected to the ground where through as you can see the eyes always to check whether the IC is good or not you should just check the capacitor near to this IC if, if you find the capacitor are shorted to the ground in both sides means the IC is bad you should replace it with another IC with the same reference okay you can also check the IC using just your finger okay you can just feel the heat of this IC if you find that the heat of this IC is not normal is increased I mean the IC is very hot means the IC is bad okay so you have three methods or three ways that you can use to check whether the IC is good or not by feeling the heat of this do i see if the heat is increased if it is hot means the ic is bad or you can check the pf capacitor around the ic for find that one of this capacitor is shorted to the ground in both sides means the ic is bad you can also check the body of this ic if you find something in the body if this i see for example a burn or a hole or something like that mean or a crack means the ic is bad i will show you a bad ic okay i will show you a bad ic in another motherboard of the laptop so as you can see here this is an example of a bad ic do you see this ic this is an IC that is burned out as you can see we have here a hole this IC should be replaced okay so always you should check the body of the IC the body of the IC should be clean and should be normal okay now I want to speak about the connectors so the connectors in the motherboard the connectors and the slots in the cell phone motherboard is among the failure that is repeated frequently for example the battery connector okay or the charge the battery connector for example always I get some cell phones that cannot be charged or that they have a problem in the charging circuit and I find that sometimes that the connector of the battery is good its pins are good but there is a problem one of these three pins for example are cracked inside or problem in the solder in the soldering so always you should check the continuity between this part and this part i will show you how because if there is a broken pin 
you will not get you will need you will not get a buzzer or a continuity when checking it i will show you how so let's first put the multimeter to the buzzer option and then press the power button as you can see so now let's check the continuity so the continuity is good so you should always check between this part and this part as you can see so let's check so for this pin it is good let's check the other pin as you can see good let's check the third one as you can see good but sometimes i find that even if i check for example this terminal to this terminal i don't find or i don't get a continuity you know why because always sometimes this as you see pin here or terminal can be broken inside so please pay attention to this step and also this is one of the majority failure in the cell phone motherboard this is the connector the charge connector so always if you have a problem like this problem the charge connector problem the first step is to check inside of the connector if you find that this part is failed is bad is distorted or not in good shape so you should replace the whole connector by p but pay attention if you want to to replace the connector you should get another connector with the same size and same characteristics okay because the connectors are not the same as you can see for example here we have this connector and we have this do you see this it has this shape and this it has another shape so always if you want to replace the charge connector in a cell phone you should use the same connector so if you find that here inside the connector is good so you should check these pins as you see maybe the soldering is bad you should make another solder soldering a new soldering and also check here the ground this part should be checked okay and you can move the connector like this okay the same for this as you can see always you should check this part inside if this part is good then the second step is to check these pins okay this is pins where we have five volt and ground and data lines okay so you should check the solder in here you can even make a new solder here okay and also check here ground this part for ground and move the connector like this if you have a bad connector you should replace it of course if this part is good you should just make another solder in here okay the same also for this connector this is audio connector okay as you can see with the same working principle you can check inside it if it is good then check all these pins check the soldering here okay so the same for the sim connector as you can see for the sim connector also this pins can be broken the same working principle with this you can check these pins as you can see here always i get some problem like this problem in the battery connector in the charge connector and in the sim connector okay so always you should put the multimeter to the buzzer option and check the continuity as you can see and then so always as you can see here we have here three pins as you can see and here we have three terminals soldered terminals and here we have other pins and three terminals so pay attention this pin here or this yellow one is not connected to this we can't check as you can see is not connected do you see those pins are not connected but you can check between this part here as you can see and this pin okay and also this part and this pin and also this part and this pin the same here check between this and this this and this 
and this and this as you can see and for the same connected check the soldering if you have a bad soldering make another soldering okay also for this if you have a bad soldering make another soldering so i want to add that also for the switches the same working principle i get some cell phone boards with bad switches and always i find a broken switch or a bad soldering you should just check the switch if the switch is good then check the soldering for the switch there is two type of failure a bad switch itself or a bad soldering okay if you have a good switch then check the soldering okay so this is for the switches so to check whether the switch is good or not what should you do you can just put the multimeter in the ground and in the high pin here and then press the switch if you hear a buzzer then the switch is good so right now i will show you how to check any switch in any cell phone motherboard so how can we know if the switch is good or not simple so i can just put the black probe here in the ground let's put the black probe here and then go to one pin here the high pin the pin where we have the voltage and then put the other probe if i press the switch i should get a buzzer i should get a continuity so let's check as you see do you see means the switch is good when you press the switch you should hear a buzzer you should get a continuity in the multimeter as you can see okay so always put the black probe in the ground everywhere in the ground because we have the ground everywhere in the motherboard here or here or even here okay so put the black probe in the ground and look for the pin number one to find the right pin you can just check here we have the ground so this pin is connected to the ground this is ground but this pin is not this is a voltage pin where we have the voltage so let's put the red probe in this pin and then press the switch as you can see if you get a buzzer then the switch is good if you don't get a buzzer means the switch is bad you should replace so it we're going okay. to see the cell phone parts or components so i will teach you the basics and the cell phone in general by understanding this curves okay you can understand any cell phone because i give to you in this course all tanks in general i will give you the working principle of the cell phone motherboard as you can see here you will find in the cell phone motherboard or, or in the smartphone motherboard always big chips as you can see for example this is the processor as you can see this is a big chip always the big chip you will find processor and the ram and this and this this is ic's this square shape are ic's okay and here you will find that for every circuit for example the ic for the power okay this is the power IC for every circuit in the cell phone motherboard it contains a controller a controller is the IC and of course as you see we have here some MOSFETs as you can see and of course we have some PF capacitor so this is a ceramic capacitor this capacitor are ceramic capacitor and for this for example this is inductor okay this is inductor you should differentiate between inductor and ceramic capacitor so this is inductor and those are ceramic capacitor and also those are inductors so to check inductors you should put the multimeter to do buzzer option or, or to the continuity option and then check the inductors if you hear a buzzer 
or you get a continuity or a low resistance means the inductors are good but for the PF capacitor for example you should not hear any buzzer okay so here this is the same slot as you can see always when you want to check the same slot you should check this pins as you can see and check, check also the solder the same also for the battery connector as you can see always you should check these pins as you can see and also check the soldering here okay here switch also when you have a problem with switch as you can see you should check always the soldering because the switch can be desoldered okay always you should check the solder and as you can see here for example for this ic how can you check if this ic is bad or not if the ic is bad you will find that the pf capacitor near to the ic are shorted to the ground okay or if you touch the ic with your finger you will feel that the ic is hot is very hot if the ic if the head of the ic increase means the ic is bad this is a rule in electronic when an ic is bad in every motherboard it will be hot so as you can see here in this motherboard also as you can see this is as you see we have here a circuit this yellow line means this is first circuit where we have the processor and the ram okay here as you see we have many pf capacitor always we find capacitors a lot of ceramic capacitor because this is the filtering capacitor because in the cell phone the voltage should be continuous should be should be a filtered voltage and a pure voltage okay so here we have capacitors we have the processor and the ram here we have another circuit as you can see here over here this is the networking and the wi-fi as you can see here in this symbol you can find some assembles in some ICs. so this is the networking circuit here we have another circuit as you can see here as you can see the power management ic okay and this is some connectors like the sim slot the camera and other connectors as you can see okay so for this motherboard as you can see here also the same working principle always we find a lot of capacitors for this motherboard because the first thing to do in every motherboard is a visual inspection okay always do a visual inspection before doing anything if you want to repair or to troubleshoot a cell phone motherboard always you should begin with visual inspection because the visual inspection you can detect the failed components by just looking to the motherboard as you can see for example here we have a problem here as you can see just with the visual inspection you can note that this component as you see is cracked is bad without testing anything in the motherboard so the visual inspection is good to begin with okay here of course in this motherboard we have some big capacitor this capacitor this is a chemical capacitor we find this kind of capacitor in laptop motherboard i can show you a laptop motherboard with this capacitor exactly like this capacitor for the laptop motherboard okay so this is a chemical capacitors okay this is a kind of chemical capacitors okay so here also we have many components some inductors this is inductor of course this is a PF capacitor this is a resistor a current sense resistor okay and we have many MOSFETs here etc I will show you right now how you can check the switches in the cell phone motherboard so to check the serviceability of any switch in the laptop motherboard as you can see here you should first set the multimeter to the buzzer option and there press the power button the switch contain 
two pins okay the ground and the high pin the pin where we have voltage okay so to check the serviceability of this switch what should we do we can just put the black probe in the ground and then look for the high pin so here we have the ground this is the ground so this is the high pin as you can see so i should put the red probe in the high pin as you can see if i press the switch as you can see i hear a buzzer okay or i get a continuity as you can see in the multimeter so when you press the switch as you can see we get a low resistance in the multimeter means the switch is worked correctly okay so you should just put the black probe in the ground we have here the ground everywhere in the motherboard as you can see and then put the red probe in the high pin of the switch the pin contains two switches okay and then press the switch if you press the switch and you get a buzzer or a low resistance here in the multimeter as you can see means the switch is okay but if you press the switch and you didn't get a continuity or a low resistance in the multimeter means the switch is failed you should replace it so to summarize as you can see here this is the cell phone motherboard i want to tell you that if you want to master the cell phone motherboard repairing i advise you to learn the working principle of the laptop motherboard as you can see you know what because the cell phone motherboard and the laptop motherboard are the same in the working principle if you can understand the laptop motherboard where we have a big chips as you can see the processor the North Bridge or the GMCH, the graphic card, the RAM, the ICH. We have inductors as you can see. Do you see inductors? The same. We have also inductors as you can see here. Into cell phone motherboards. As you can see. This is inductor. This is a cell phone motherboard. Okay. Here we have inductor. Here we have inductor. The same working principle. So if you can understand the working principle of the laptop motherboard as you can see you can go deeper into understanding the cell phone motherboard you can even go and check the tablet motherboard as you can see this is for the tablet as you can see we have here a tablet okay this is a failed a tablet a broken screen you see you can also begin with this okay so as you can see here this is the tablet motherboard and this is the cell phone motherboard here also as you can see the same working principle we have the processor we have the bios as you can see here we have inductors we have ICs, as you can see here also in this tablet this is the webcam the camera here we have the bios as you can see processor this is the oscillator we have here the crystal oscillator also crystal oscillator as you see this is the ICs and the ceramic capacitor and now around the ICs we have here the lead so I advise you to learn the basics of laptop motherboard and also tablet motherboard and then you can go to specialize in cell phone motherboard if you understand laptop motherboard and tablet motherboard as you can see here okay where we have the big ICs you can easily master and understand anything in the cell phone motherboard because the working principle is the same as you see always we find IC as you can see so this is the cell phone motherboard we have here ic a power management ic we have here ceramic capacitor around this ic we have some mosfets and we have inductor okay so if we go to 
the laptop motherboard we will find the same working principle as you can see here do you see we have an ic here we have pf capacitors are now the ic as you can see here okay we have also another ic we have pf capacitors okay so here as you can see also we have an ic here we have pf capacitors or serum capacitor around it we have mosfets okay so the same working principle if we go also to the tablet we have ic we have pf capacitors ic we have serum capacitors and we have a transistor okay also if we go to this tablet as you can see here do you see this ic do you see the pf capacitors always the same working principle to know whether this ic is good or not you can just check the pf capacitors around the ic we have here inductor okay so this is my advice if you want to master the seal from motherboard you should first begin by understanding the laptop motherboard where we have big ICs and big chips okay and then you can go and learn the basics of tablet motherboards exactly as this for example okay and then the last step is to master the cell phone motherboard because you will gain a lot of information in the laptop motherboard you will understand everything about circuit about the relationship between between chips and circuits you will understand the power the power management ic's like 3 volt and 5 volt the charge ic etc the random access memory because in the laptop motherboard as you can see for example here we have the processor and here we have the ram as you see but in the c4 motherboard we have the processor and we have the ram okay so it's not easy for the beginner to understand the c4 motherboard in the first time that's why to begin with the laptop motherboard it will be better okay so this is my advice for you before going and studying cell phone motherboard try to begin with the big motherboards for the laptop motherboard or even for the desktop or computer motherboard so okay. we can see that the motherboard of the cell phone has the same working principle as the motherboard of a laptop computer as you can see this is a laptop computer motherboard where we find the processor the gmch the graphic card the ich the rams some mosfets ic's here we have capacitors inductors chemical capacitors etc as you can see the same the working principle of the cell phone motherboard is the same the difference is that this is a small motherboard means the design will be different but the same working principle okay so this is the board like the pcb design this is the pcb board as you can see here we have chips as you can see and ic's and over here we have the SMD component like capacitors for example resistors diodes inductors etc of course we have some connectors as you can see as you can see here and of course we have some slots okay and also switches etc okay so this is just an interaction before going deeper into understanding the cell phone motherboard let's see for example this also always the same working principle as you can see here this is the pcb board as you can see here we have always chips processor ram etc here we have some ic's as you can see here this is the smd compound like 
capacitor as you can see here we have some mosfets diodes okay slot as you can see we have the camera so, so some connectors switches also here connectors okay so for every component here it has a reference okay so as you can see here also in this motherboard as you can see so always the same working principle but there is a difference between each motherboard here the same working principle as you see we have here nvidia this is the graphic exactly like like the laptop motherboard this is a processor especially for graphic and also for processing data etc here of course we have some ic's we have some component like capacitors as you can see mosfets okay and as you can see we have this shield always this means circuits for example for this here this is one circuit here we have another circuit here we have another circuit etc okay so for this motherboard it has two sides it contains component in both sides as you can see here this is the camera this is the sim slot as you can see here we have some pads as you can see okay we have crystal oscillator we have some lead etc okay and for this as you can see here this is normally an old cell phone as you can see this is a very small motherboard it has just this motherboard as you can see where we have some slots as you can see the same working principle this ic is the monitor controller or the screen controller as you can see here we have a battery this is a battery so this motherboard contain or this phone contain a big battery as you can see here okay the architecture of the motherboard of the cell phone motherboard is divided into parts as you can see this means a part or a circuit so we can see that this as you can see this part this yellow color means a circuit for example here this part is the control part where we have the processor and the ram as you can see so for this part for example as you can see here this is for the wi-fi and bluetooth etc okay this part always this triangle or this rectangle or square means a circuit as you can see here also we have another circuit here we have another circuit as you can see okay so each rectangular means a circuit as you can see the same also for this motherboard as you can see here so this is a circuit here we have a circuit this is a network and wi-fi bluetooth circuit here okay here this is the processor with the ram this is another circuit over here here as you can see we have another circuit here we have another circuit okay so always the cell phone board is divided into many circuits and this yellow lines determine the limit of the circuit okay the same also for this as you can see here this is the control circuit where we have the processor as you can see here we have another circuit here this is another circuit here of course we have another circuit okay also in the other side the same working principle okay